Hello everybody and welcome to another Tech Tips Tuesday. Today's Tech Tips topic is about output transformers. So uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how to get a basic output transformer for your amp that you're designing. Also how to look at an output transformer you have that you don't know about and get a little information about that that should be helpful. Um, and I won't go into the really heavy detail because some of that is even beyond me. Um, there's some really complicated stuff about the core size and um, that, that we'll, we'll see this a little bit in a minute. It's areas that I vaguely understand myself, but I, I know enough to know how to do what I want to do. And this should also help most people doing their decisions about how they want to choose an, a, tr a transformer for an output or an output transformer for an amplifier. So the first part we want to look at is what tubes are you using? Uh, if you know that you wanted to use EL84s, EL34s, 6V6s, 6L6s, you, you would choose that, those for your particular use and how much output wattage you want. Um, and then you choose how many of them you want, and then you, you'll figure out what class operation you want to work in. Most of the time I've seen people using the typical push-pull amplifier with AB1 uh, class amplification. Sometimes though people are using a style kind of like the Champ, which is a, uh, a standard um, class A1 uh, amplifier that's just using a single tube or maybe a several tubes but in parallel. So those are not going to be what I'm focusing on, but you can still look in your data sheet and look. Uh, right here you can see um, AF Class A amplifier just trad connected in a standard uh, non-push-pull setup. Uh, the single end is the term I was trying to think of. Single ended amplifier um, allows you to have uh, its lower output wattage, but it has a little bit different character some people like. That's why the Champ is still popular. But a more common one you see in most cases is a dual output tube or quad output tubes, or maybe even six output tubes, depending in class AB, pushing and pu working in push pull. So you scroll down through your data sheet. I'm just gonna choose six L6s because that's what's in the uh, amp I'm looking at right now and working with for the, uh, the baseman that I'm converting to a, um, a dumble, but this works in this case. So what you want to look for is either fixed or cathode bias. You need to look at the load resistance that that tube will want to, to see or work with, you know, what its resistance is. And then you want the next stage to match that. And the next stage in this case is going to be the transformer, the output transformer. It doesn't have to be an exact clone, but that is kind of the optimal transformer working range, if you will. So for two tubes, you would choose, let's say we were going to be working at what we knew about 450 volts. And we knew that our grid, grid supply voltage would be about 400, you know, or maybe you were 353, 450, 350. You can figure that out for the other design values you, we, you might need to work with. But the more important one you get down here is this load resistance. And they're saying, say for a 450 volt amp, is 5,600 ohms. So um, that's for two tubes. If you were to say add two more tubes, have two on either half, just with, in, like with any other impedance calculation, when you make things in parallel, it ends up kind of halving them. So you have two in parallel on either side. You used to have 5,600, you would now want to have that roughly for four in that, in that situation. So that would be, what would that be, 26? or 2550, 2650, 2550 um, would get you 5600. Uh, oh no, actually, sorry, that's not that's not good math because that would be 5100. Anyway, do 5600 divided by two, there'd be three, carry the, let me pull my calculator up. About 2800, so just around three, you know, just around 3K or 2500. So that's, again, that's a ballpark figure. Not all transformers are gonna fit exactly that, but you know if you're close to that, you should be in good shape. So that is how you kind of decide what you want for your output transformer impedance. You also need to make sure it can handle the voltage range that you want it to work in roughly. You also want to make sure that um, there's a couple other things that generally will kind of be explained in a lot of places. Like they'll say, this is typical for a baseman 100 watt amp. Then you would know that that would be also related to it. But we'll look at an example from Hammond. So Hammond here has a uh, primary impedance of 2000 ohms uh, with output imp secondary impedances of 4, 8, and 16. Uh, and they say the turns ratio on this is 22.35 to 1. That turns ratio is important to understanding how the other part I was going to mention of if you want to go backwards. Uh, if you were to take, for example, in this amp and, and, and do the calculation I will show you in a minute, you'd be able to see exactly how much voltage would come out if you were to put that, say, 450 or 440 or whatever volts on the primary side, what the output should be on the secondary side based upon that turns ratio. Uh, and then you could also calculate if you know an ohms rating you wanted to put that was not matching these. Say you had a, a nine ohm uh, speaker for some weird reason. You could do the exact calculation of what primary impedance you'd get on the other side. And we'll look at that in just a second. But th this data sheet here helps you know all of the values you'd want to choose and helps you figure out, okay, I wanted it. This looks like it's close to the 2500 I needed. So that should work. 
Uh, it says it can take 447 volts at the primary impedance, so that's about the range I want to keep it at, and that's why I was wanting is 4, 450. You may want to lower your voltage a little bit to meet that expectation, but I generally think most of these transformers are designed to not be a meltdown rate at their rated voltage, so that you can go up and down a little bit. Uh, you just have to be very careful not to go over a lot. Looks like my cat Jack wants to help out in the video today. Um, so let's jump up to another uh, website that I use a lot called akinamps.com. Uh, in this case, akinamps has a lot of great articles, but they do talk about how output transformers generally work and what you need to do to make sure you understand the basic math. And this is the whole formula that I kind of was talking about loosely is Z is your impedance, N is the number of turns and V is voltage and P and S just mean primary or secondary. So if you know your primary and secondary impedances, like we saw 2000 and eight or four or 16 or whatever, you could then calculate the turns ratio at that point by doing, um, the, you would take the square root of that value because if you see it squared, the typical math operation was if you wanted to get rid of this squared on this side, you have to do a square root on that side and the other to both sides of the equation. Similarly, if you know the voltage rating on one side and you can calculate the other side, you can then make this go backwards. So a classic trick people will use to see what the uh, turns ratio is on a uh, transformer would be to get a variac, hook it up to uh, the transformer on one side, which they wouldn't know what it was, but it set it at a very low rating, like say 10 volts. If you've got the primary side, your other side is going to be very low, one or two volts, and you're fine. But if you've got the right one, that 10 volts might jump up to 200. So you just get a maybe 400, whatever, but you get a, a multimeter on the opposite side and you make sure you don't let those leads get close to each other so they can arc. Jack wants to help with the video today. So they won't arc and cause damage or blow up the transformer or kill you. Uh, but you connect those to the multimeter, separate those leads apart, and then put that 10 volts in or one volt or whatever you might want to see. You will then get an opposing end voltage that gives you that voltage rating, which is also basically the equivalent of the, the turns ratio. So say you put in 10 volts, the output was 200 volts. That meant that's a 20 to one or 200 divided by 10, a turns ratio slash voltage ratio. Then you square root of that, or sorry, square that, and you should get the impedance ratio. And then that would mean if you put a four ohm on the one side, you'd know with that impedance ratio what you'd get out on the other side. Now the multiple taps, you would need to repeat that for each tap and, and make sure you got that, but the, the, the rule is going to be the same. Each tap is going to have a slightly different windings ratio to get the different impedances on that outputs on the output side. So, um, so the only other part of this that I, I recommend reading a bit more about is things get a little bit more complicated when you start talking about things like primary inductance, leakage inductance and capacitance, power handling capability, etc. The good thing about an, uh, a transformer like we talked about, though, is this is designed for tube amplifiers in this kind of a range. Uh, it's designed for 100 watts. It even says it right on it. So it can handle 100 watts of output. That would generally mean at that voltage rating with the tubes that are running near that impedance range, you shouldn't be overloading this particular amp or this particular transformer. So if you are going to be more about trying to design some really esoteric amps that have really esoteric tubes, it might take some work to find a transformer that fits it, or you may have to pay somebody to custom wind one. They would have the expertise to help you solve some of those questions anyway about uh, that, but you could at least tell them what you expect your operating ranges to the tubes to be. But the bigger part really, I think, is most of us are just trying to take an existing known output section. Maybe this schematic we found doesn't define exactly what you want. You can look up that data sheet, find the, the expected uh, impotence of the tubes, what they would operate at for that particular setup, and then find something that fits. So you can also take an unknown transformer and kind of do the reverse on that. I've seen some great videos on YouTube that, sh that show people actually doing that. Uh, I may try and do that at some point for people if that makes sense to them, but I hope this does make some sense of how output transformers work in that that ratio, calculating out what your impedance needs to be, what your voltage will be, you know, those kinds of things. Um, please let me know if this is confusing, if there's anything else you need clarified. Uh, give me a like, thumbs up, and subscribe. Thanks, everybody.